In this video, we're going to talk about optimization in calculus. What does optimize mean? Optimize means to find the best or optimal value or solution. Now what best means, it depends on the situation. For us, it could be a maximum value or it could be a minimum value. It just depends. So how do we know? Well, we can look for some keywords. Some keywords that indicate that we're looking for a maximum value would be things like greatest, largest, longest, most. Whereas words that would indicate we're looking for a min value would be words like least, smallest, shortest, or maybe the phrase at least. There's some words or some vocabulary that we use with optimization. And not just when we're doing it in calculus, optimization is an entire field of mathematics. And so uh, we have a common vocabulary. The objective function is a function which describes the thing that you're trying to maximize or minimize. Along with the, the objective function, sometimes, not always, you may have one or more constraints. And what are constraints? Constraints are equations or inequalities which place bounds on the variables used to describe the objective function. Constraints are sometimes called constraint equations, if they're equations, constraint inequalities, if they're inequalities, or auxiliary equations. So let's look at an example. A farmer has 36 feet of fencing material and wants to make a rectangular pen. Of all the possible pens he could make, which one has the most area? So we see this keyword most area. And so if you think about it, if I'm limited by the perimeter, it's going to be 36. And remember, perimeter for a rectangle. It's just the twice the length plus twice the width. The perimeter for any shape is just adding up the length of every side. And so uh, we have two lengths and two widths. And we want that to be 36. That means the length plus the width should equal 18. So I could have uh, the length being 16, the width being two, the length could be eight, the width could be 10 and so on. And they don't have to be whole numbers. I just showed whole numbers uh, because it's easy to perform the calculations. And if we look at the area of these, you can see that there's a big difference. If I have uh, a length of 16 and a width of two, the area is 32. If I make the length a little shorter, the width a little bit more, I get a big jump, more than twice the size. Area is now 65. And then uh, over here, I get uh, not such a big difference between having an, a length of 10 and a width of 8. I only get 80 uh, versus if the length and width are equal, I get 81. So most area is telling me that my area is the objective function. I'm trying to maximize the area. So we know from geometry the area is length times width. But the problem is, is that that has two variables, length and width. Now, if you stay in calculus to third semester calculus, you would know how to find the maximum value of a function of two variables. But here, we don't know. And we don't need to know because we're also told that not only do we want to find the, 
the largest area, but our constraint, we have a limitation. We only have 36 feet of fencing. That means the perimeter can be no more than 36. So twice the length plus twice the width has to be 36. And so what we can do is use this second equation to eliminate one of the variables from our objective function. And so the way we do that is we go ahead and uh, solve for one of the variables. Here I've solved for L. You could also solve for W. So just a quick reminder. What did I do here? I said that two, oops. I said that 2L would be uh, 36 minus 2W. And then I divide everything by two. And that gives me my L equals 18 minus W. And I go ahead and take that 18 minus W, put it in the place of L in my area function. And now I get the area is parentheses 18 minus W times W. Or area as a function of W only is 18 W minus W squared. And mathematically, uh, I can't have uh, W being smaller than zero or bigger than 18. Otherwise, I would get a negative area. So there's limitations on my choices of W. But so what do I want to do? Well, I'm trying to find the largest area, the most area. So I need to find the absolute max of this function on the interval from 0 to 18. So we know how to do that. We find the critical numbers. So we go ahead and take the derivative, set that equal to zero, solve, I'll get w equals nine. And then I can just check the endpoints. Really the endpoints are just as a sanity check. Remember we're trying to maximize the area. Well, if I choose my endpoints to be zero and 18, then the area would be zero with those choices. That would be an absurd choice for w. Uh, but, uh, we already saw actually in our previous example that when w is nine, that the length is also going to be nine and nine times nine is 81. And so the pen with the most area measures nine feet by nine feet. So let's look at what is our strategy? What steps did we use in solving this problem? So the first thing we did is we identified the objective function. What are we trying to maximize or minimize? Then we wrote down any constraints or auxiliary equations. So in our example, we were trying to maximize the area, but we were told that the perimeter had to be limited to 36 feet of fencing. Um, and then in our case, we needed to use the constraint equations to reduce the objective function to a single variable. So we solved for L and then wrote the area as a function of W only. And now step four, I don't want you to get confused by this. This is really for a sanity check. And this is where you're going to use some reasoning. There's not going to be a hard and fast answer to this in every single problem. We want to determine a reasonable closed interval. In fact, you could argue that the interval that I used in our example was not reasonable. It doesn't make any sense to have w equals 0 or w equal 18, where you would have a pen with zero area. So maybe it would have made more sense if I would have said that, um, that really I want w to be between 1 and 17, for example. And this is really the bounds that we choose are show two things. One, that we understand the context of the situation. And number two, just to provide a sanity check. 
And then we're going to find the absolute max and min of the objective function on the closed interval. So we're going to look at the critical number. So we're going to take the derivative, set it equal to zero, and solve. And then just to be sure, we're going to check our endpoints from the previous steps to make sure that if we're looking for a maximum, the value at the endpoint should be smaller. If we're looking for a minimum, the value at the endpoints should be larger. And finally, we're going to actually answer the question. So we've got to make sure that if the question says, what are the dimensions, that we answer with all of the dimensions. If the question is, what is the area, then we answer with the area. We've got to make sure that we answer the question. And using a complete sentence is going to just help your mind uh, verify it, if what you're writing makes any sense.